Sylvia from Vintage Kitchen Vixen, where I share tips for simple living, creating memorable gatherings, and preparing wholesome and traditional recipes with a vintage twist. And today I'm going to give you a tour of my victory garden. So today <laughs> it's actually, I don't know if you can see it, but it is currently drizzling, which is wonderful because it's been a very dry summer. I have to water almost every day um, just because it's been so intensely hot. Yes. And I don't know if you can see my grass, but it's a bit brown and I'm really hoping this rain that we've gotten this week, which hasn't been very much, we had like a downpour the other day and I woke up this morning and the ground was wet and it's been drizzling all morning. So I'm hoping we'll get some green grass. And I don't care so much about grass, but I do like running around barefoot and I don't like crunchy grass. Like I like it to be soft. The benefit of having dry grass is that I haven't had to do any mowing. We mowed once in May and we haven't mowed since. So I'm gonna give you a little tour, so let's go. Doing a lot more with container gardening this year. I didn't do very much last year. So here I have a radicchio, radicchio, I don't know how to pronounce it, but that sprouted. And I have arugula and my cat. Here I have lolo darky lettuce. Been snipping away at it. And my geraniums. And here I have Grand Rapids lettuce, and I don't remember what this is, but it's some kind of lettuce. Um, I think it's some kind of German lettuce that my mom brought back. And I'll go over to my other containers. You can see my kids' toys in the background. I have spinach that bolted because it's insanely hot. It's my first time trying to grow spinach, and this happened. I'm going to try it when it cools down. And here I have another German lettuce. It's called Fluxalat, so you just pick it. So this here is my basil, and this is the best I have. My, my cat's joining me on the tour, by the way. No, you just went inside, honey. So this is my basil. So last year, and this I've never had good luck with basil at all. And this year I planted it in a container. I have some in the garden as well, but it is thriving. I've already pruned this back like pretty good and it's growing like crazy. And I'm gonna be making a basil lemonade recipe. So keep an eye out for that because it is so good and refreshing and perfect for those hot summer months. Um, but my mom was telling me, cause I bought basil plants and she was with me at the time. She was telling me that the reason ba my basil basically died is because you're supposed to pull the plants apart. And it's true because when I went to take my basil apart. I took it out of the pot. You can see I didn't do very good pulling it apart because here I have like two or three plants. But this is like one pot of basil that I bought. That's all in this container. And this container, it is broken, but it was abandoned on the sidewalk. Somebody wanted to get rid of it because it's broken. And I'm like, hey, I'll take it. It's a perfectly good pot minus a broken plastic rim. But you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. And over here, I have more lettuce. I have, um, his name is Seti, by the way, in case you're wondering. <laughs> he's very wet and he's shedding all over me. Goodness, what kind of lettuce is this? I can't think. I think it's some kind of frise, um, like an endive kind type of lettuce. Um, here I have another German salad. I have a bucket in my watering can because I like to put water in there um, and just kind of let it off gas overnight because my water is chlorinated. So I let it off gas overnight <laughs> and the next morning um, I use that in combination with my watering hose to water everything and then the water has time to warm up. And yeah, I have, this is called schnitzelad. It's a cutting lettuce and I, I grew way too much in my pot, but last year I just failed miserably with my lettuce. So I'm very happy with this and I've been plucking away at it. it there's way too much lettuce in there um, and I'm aware of that, but I've been having plenty of fresh salads with young leaves and it's great. Here I had coriander, it was doing good, but then it flowered and bolted and now it's really sad and I need to replant it. So that's it for my containers. Now we get to the exciting part. So this is my main garden and it is more than doubled in size from what I had last year. My husband, bless his soul, he, well, he helped me dig up all the sod 
because that back half was basically all lawn last year and well we, we were busy in the spring we've been expanding the garden it's kind of hard to see what the original outline is now I should have taken footage before we got started but where you see that sod well be I don't know maybe you can see that maybe you can't and then we're gonna be taking it all the way back over here and that's how it's looking now uh, my first two rows are basically tomatoes so I have several varieties I have some Roma tomatoes and I have basil intermixed my pot basil is doing so much better than my ingrown basil which surprised me but that's I had problems with it last year but it's much happier than my basil last year so I have two Roma tomato plants here I have beef steak tomatoes and all of my tomato plants uh, almost all of them except for the ones in the second row I planted these from seed and at first I didn't think they were going to make it but they really bounced back so these are also beef steak they all have tomatoes now this is a rainbow tomato and finally it had it sprouted its first tomato this week so it's very very exciting times in the garden and I have another rainbow and more basil and a cat so this wall well not a wall um, we put it up it was falling over from my neighbor's side of the driveway um, and we just repurposed the bricks and outlined the garden we haven't glued it together or anything it needs a little bit of work still but one thing at a time. So here I have onions. They are not happy. I think I overwatered them. I don't know what to do with them. Um, yeah, I don't have much luck with alliums yet. And I have to learn a great deal about them. And here, this is my beet city. <laughs> Lots of beets. And I have been um, clipping at the greens a bit to include them in salads and whenever I need some greens. So some of them are yellowing. But whatever. Can't do very much about that right now, can I? And then these are pretty last minute, but I planted radishes and I don't normally, like, historically I've not liked radishes at all, but since I've learned how good they are for you, I've been really going deep in them. So you can see a radish there is ready. And then I just planted more on the sides right here. Um, my friend gave me this, it's like kind of like a, a tape. So I planted that and I'm waiting for it to sprout. Okay, so um, <laughs> here I have the tiniest little tomatoes. This is a tiny tim um, tomato plant. And I also planted this from a seedling and I had no idea it was gonna be so tiny, but they're, they're kind of cute, aren't they? And I have more basil. And here is a store-bought plant that my husband brought back from <laughs> the grocery store. So this is, I think it's a pink girl or it's a yellow tomato plant. I don't remember. Oh, I have a tag. Let's take a look. Yellow tomatoes. Okay. And here, this is my, these are my pink girls, but they're still green. And here I have a cherry tomato plant, which I bought from the nursery. And... This is very exciting. Do you see what I see? Oh my gosh, I am so excited. Uh, I don't think I have any suckers on my plant. I'm pretty diligent about taking them off. You can see that I took one off here and I like going through my tomato plants every couple of weeks just to remove any suckers because I don't want to detract from its energy of growing tomatoes. You know, I, I want it to focus on producing fruit. Okay, moving over. We have my row, my small row of peppers. It's like a half row. So here I have a sriracha pepper plant that is starting to flower. I want to try making a, a small batch of sriracha this year. Here, I'm pretty sure this is a tomato plant. I think it grew from the cherry tomatoes that were kind of like left over in the garden last year. I kind of just raked them into the soil. And lo and behold, I have extra tomato plants. I have one over here. And then I have one somewhere over here, and we'll get to that soon. And here I have jalapeno plants. I have two of them. And I already harvested one jalapeno. I really want to make some, some fermented pickled jalapenos. 
And here I have a calendula, calendula that I planted. And there's my other jalapeno pepper plant. This year, I don't really understand. It's supposed to be, they sold me red sweet bell peppers. Um, and I thought all pepper plants, like green pepper plants, turn into red peppers. So I'm not too sure about that. But there's, I think I do have two different varieties here because this is the other pepper plant. And they were the same size when I planted them and when I bought them. And I'm very excited because this is my green pepper. It has its first pepper. Last year I planted green peppers and I planted them pretty close together. I tried to heed plant spacing rules, but I also did not. Everything was super crowded. My peppers didn't have nearly enough space and I really didn't have paths to walk. So um, when you don't have paths, when you don't have space for your plants, whenever you tread near them, like you might be damaging their root system. So my peppers did not do well at all. Like I had maybe two measly little peppers on each plant. I had two or three pepper plants. So just seeing my peppers this year from last year like I wish I would have taken pictures so I could compare them but my pepper plant looks so much happier this year but let's continue all right so here I have more radishes they I don't remember what the variety is I'd have to look at the seed package again but I don't know I don't I think they take a little bit longer to grow they're some kind of Asian radish um, I'll find that out for you when I go back inside here I have some fleasbane growing and when my husband mowed the lawn um, I had him leave all the interesting looking plants um, so I have little bunches of fleasbane growing everywhere so I have some there we'll, we'll travel over there that's my neighbor's trailer okay so here I have a beautiful kale plant and I have another beautiful kale plant and I had another one over here but then the squirrel got to it. Uh, squirrels have gotten to a lot of my plants. And here on the sides of my rows, because they're a little bit raised, I have wood sorrel growing. So that's just growing as a weed. But I don't know if you knew this, but wood sorrel is completely edible. And I like, I, I actually harvest a bunch whenever I gather greens for my salads. And I include a small bunch in there. So this is, this gets harvested too. Uh, you can't have too much at a time because it is high in oxalates but it has a nice lemony flavor and my little toddler like my toddler like loves snacking on this stuff but i'm always wary of how much he eats because i don't want him eating too much so it has these tiny little flowers kind of looks like clover so that's wood sorrel all right now we're moving into the beans, which I've been, oh gosh, what is the word I'm looking for? Succession planting. Some of my beans are happy, some are not. I need to stake them. There are a lot of plants in my garden that I need to stake. And I cannot, for the life of me, find stakes anywhere this year. Like people went crazy with their victory gardens. Like a lot of people who didn't garden before have gardens this year and I can't find tomato cages. I can't find stakes. And I expanded my garden and it had nothing to do with uh, what's going on in the world right now, but I expanded my garden this year because I've always wanted a big garden and I still can't find stakes anywhere. I ideally wanted to get bamboo plants like these, but I can't find them anywhere. And I went to hardware stores and they're like, yeah, we're sold out. And they never got any more back in. And they also were sold out of chicken wire because everybody got chickens this year. And I think that's fantastic, but it sucks for me. So here I planted several bean varieties and I don't even remember. They're kind of all mixed together, which probably wasn't a smart thing to do, but I would um, chit them. So uh, kind of germinating them before I planted them. So here I think I have a purple bean variety. And this looks to be, uh, I don't know. I have yellow beans, I have green beans. And look, I'm starting to get beans. So this is very exciting. I love fresh beans. Look at all those beans. I need to start picking them. <gasps> I need to start picking beans. Guess what I'm having for dinner tonight? Because beans, the more you pick them, the more they'll grow and they'll just keep producing for you. So yeah, um, I'm hoping I can just eat beans continually, continuously this summer and 
I don't think I'm going to have enough beans to can a bunch of dilly beans because I love dilly beans, but I do have a recipe just for like a one jar at a time dilly beans because I love putting them in like Caesars and so good. Okay. So moving over, we have my peas and I have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of wood sorrel. So I think I need to remove a bunch because it's kind of getting in the way of my peas, which is not good. So here I have a random sunflower, which I did not plant here. I tried having designated plants for growing sunflowers and lo and behold, the squirrels, the birds, they thwarted all of my sunflower plants. And I guess they brought some sunflower seeds in the garden because here I have a sunflower plant growing in my pea patch. What are you gonna do? I tried installing in this little trellis thingy so that my bean, my sweet peas, which like to, I don't know, I may have been calling them beans instead of peas, and I'm sorry, I did not mean to do that, but we were just in the bee, bean patch, so that's why. Oh, that's, I don't like these little grasses growing. And I thought this was purslane, but I don't think because it has these little markings. Purslane is edible, and I have it in my, um, my herb garden. We'll be going over there soon. I don't think this is purslane, though, if you know what this is. Please let me know because I'd like to know. I've been letting it grow just as a ground cover. Um, as you can see, I have not mulched anything. I had every intention to mulch, but I didn't mulch. <gasps> I have a pea! Okay, I have a pea. I'm ex oh, I have three peas. Okay, I am very excited right now. Look, we're discovering things together in my victory garden. Okay, moving on. So, bunch of peas. A bean plant. Oops. I sat on my bean plant or knelt down on it. At least I have more peas. Look. Oh, I'm so excited. My toddler has not seen this because he loves picking at beans and just munching on them. Here I have a bean that I guess I mistaked. I guess I must have planted beans over here thinking it was a peach it. Oops. No big deal. Um, yeah. Just gonna pick this little grass away. I did not get the root. Oh, there it is. Tossed away. Threw it at my cat. Did not hit him. This is an unhappy looking pea. I keep trying to coax them onto the trellis and they don't like being coaxed. I have to weed later because yeah, there is way too much wood sorrel going on over here. I like a little bit on the sides just to hold it up, but it's taking over my garden and this is not meant to be a wood sorrel patch. Oh, Oh, you know, there's so much wood sorrel that you can't see this cherry tomato plant. I told you that I had another one, and I think I might have yet another one. I think I have at least two, but there's one that's camouflaged by wood sorrel. Okay, um, here I have Swiss chard. Swiss chard is a biennial, so it will be coming back next year, and next year I'm going to let it go to seed. And then I'll never have to buy Swiss chard seeds again because it'll just continuously leave me a crop of Swiss chard. So here I have more Swiss chard, more Swiss chard. You know what? You can go away with Swiss swirl. Next, kohlrabi. Kohlrabi is supposed to be one of these vegetables that's super easy to grow and it's great for victory gardens. But you know what? I've been having a hard time because, well, let's see. I had one over here and it was as big as that plant and I came one morning to water and lo and behold some squirrel or something came and just chopped it off and they just left all the leaves in little itty bitty pieces I guess they were eating and you know what? I guess fine they enjoyed it but I don't have too many but this one I started from seed and I am starting to doubt that it's actually kohlrabi because look at this one and look at this one like where's my bulb is this even kohlrabi? I don't know. We have a little, this one I also started from a seedling in there. I have this purslane that's not actually purslane. I'll show you purslane. And then there's another kohlrabi. They were giving them, well, they weren't giving them away at the nursery, but I got four plants for a dollar. So I couldn't pass that up. And it looks like, yeah, and then the one that was thieved by a squirrel or some intruder. Yeah, that was also from the nursery. Here I have my eggplant. I had two eggplants. I started this from a seedling. I had two of them. One of them was in that white container that's over yonder that my frise is in. 
Uh, you can see this is like my little toddler's play zone. It's a mess. It's not organized. I should put everything in the shed, but I don't. Sometimes I do. I did not clean up before this video. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is an eggplant that I started from seed. It's starting to do things. Uh, yeah, right there. It's starting to do things. Doesn't have any fruit yet. But we're getting there. But yeah, I had one that I was going to grow in a pot because I just didn't have enough room because I my husband came back with two mystery, well, two surprise tomatoes from the store. So that kind of took up the spot of the eggplant. And I had the other one in a pot and guess what? Squirrel came, ruined everything. So I just have one eggplant and I learned a valuable lesson. You should always plant more seedlings than you need. So you never know when a squirrel is gonna come and chop away at what you have here. I'm trying to grow cabbage. I'm also trying to grow cabbage here. Yes, I know I need to weed. More cabbage and calendula. So those are my cabbages. I don't think I'm going to be successful with my cabbages, but we can hope. Now we're about to move into the shame of my garden. So let's go check that out. So this is my rhubarb patch that we're going into. This was all cleared out in the spring and I planted wildflower seeds on the side of the rhubarb and I, this is what I had a problem with last year in my front garden beds, which is completely different. Okay, excuse my backyard. It's not very pretty in some places, but make do with what I have. Anyhow, um, I planted wildflower seeds in my rhubarb patch on the right hand side of my rhubarb and come spring when things started sprouting up. I couldn't tell what was a wildflower and what was a weed, but at the same time I try to eat most of my weeds, but it just means it's a little bit wild. And I also tried growing Brussels sprouts on the left hand side and I had intruders just killing everything. I had one that I thought was going to survive and then go out one morning and it's gone. So it's, it's my luck. Okay, we're going to take a look at this patch. So going into my little patch of shame, here I have a hyacinth that I planted last year. So it's doing very good so far. I'm excited for it to bloom. And in between, I guess it's just like this little forgotten area here. <laughs> this is where I had, I, I built this little stone path, which is overgrown. I need to weed it out. This, I'm pretty sure it's catnip. It's not mint, but it's in the mint family. If you know what it is, please let me know because I haven't figured it out. I did not plant it. It was here last year. Um, but here I had five Brussels sprouts growing. I mean, if they would have kept growing, this would be cleared out. So I had to reseed. So those are Brussels sprout seedlings that are coming up. And I have, go away. There are some more, so I have clover growing. So those are Brussels sprouts right here. And here, I think this is a bean that I planted. I think it's a fava bean. Miss, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is a bean that I planted. Here I have my rhubarb, which is so sad because it gets eaten. And I let it flower in the spring because I thought it would do something. That was the wrong thing to do. My mom corrected me as soon as she came here and she's like, Sylvia, you do not let your you do not let your rhubarb flower. And I'm like, well, why not? And well, because it spends so much energy growing the flower that it doesn't it can't afford much else. So my rhubarb's not doing very happy. I'm not gonna have a very good rhubarb crop. And also, I mean Look at the home I've given my rhubarb. It's awful. But look, I have I have some wildflowers and I'm pretty sure that's ragweed growing. My mother-in-law, she'll go and if she's walking along the side of the road and she sees us growing, she'll just pick it out. She's like a good Samaritan that way. And then I think I have more catnip over here or whatever that is. I also have, um, this is, I think this is lamb's quarters. This is edible, and most people see that as a weed, but I want this weed because I'm going to eat it. And then here I have some kind of like dandelion relative. I don't remember what it's called. It's also edible. So I'm going to try 
to do something about it and learn what I can do with it. And then here I have wildflowers and I don't know what this is. It's just kind of mishmash of everything. So that's my shame. We're going to move away from here and forget we ever saw this. So now, now that we've seen my shame, we're going to walk on over to my little herb patch. It's my little composter that I set up this year. There's fleasbane growing. Apparently you can make a tea out of the leaves. So I keep meaning to harvest this and get it to drying, but I have so many things drying right now. Oh, here, I have a hard time seeing it because there's fleasbane and I have all of these violet plants that popped up since we dug this in, but this is a blackberry that my in-laws gave to my little boy as a birthday gift because he loves blackberries. A gift that keeps on giving. I think that's wonderful. So here is my herb garden. And I have lilies and I have all kinds of things going on here. So let's take a look here. I have a very unhappy dill plant. It is flowered and I, I don't know. I thought dill was easy to grow. I had a hard time growing it last year. This was a plant that I bought. So I'm going to be using this when I pickle, which is, yeah, I should have grown more dill. I'm going to try growing it from seed again last, uh, next year because yeah, I have dill seeds and this is just really sad. I had swallowtail caterpillars on here. There were like three or four and I picked them off because I didn't want them to eat my dill. So I think they inflicted some kind of damage on my dill. Here I have mint. I planted mint last year. That's my mint corner. I have been harvesting mint. I have harvested mint twice and you can see plain as day. I need to harvest again. <laughs> And that's good because I love mint tea and I'm still drinking mint tea that I harvested last year. And I didn't harvest nearly enough mint last year. Um, anyhow, uh, that's some time. It's just regular time that I planted this year. This is purslane. You can see it doesn't have the same markings. It has a thicker red um, vine kind of thing. And I just clip this off and I include it in my salads and my cat is back for the tour. Okay, here's rosemary. So I dug up my rosemary that was in my garden last year and I kept it over winter in a pot. It was on my kitchen table and it did pretty good. I thought it was going to survive. I was going to dig it back in, but right before this, the melt happened, it just died. And I learned that the thing I should have done is it likes being misted. So I should have been spraying it throughout the winter and I did not do that. And it was unhappy and it died, but now it's very happy and I'm, I'm happy it's happy because it'll keep me happy too. Here I have summer savory, which I have harvested twice and I'm going to keep harvesting it because I don't want it to flower and I love savory. Here I have the sad tarragon plant. I bought it at the hardware store. It was the happiest tarragon plant that was there and I should have just left it alone, but it looks like it's kind of bouncing back. Maybe it'll be happier next year. More, more purslane. This is a leek plant that I had planted last year and I'm letting it go to seed. I have more that I'm letting to go to seed because then I'm going to have leeks all over here next year. Never have to buy leeks again. And I have parsley growing all over the place because my parsley went to seed last year. And when my mom comes, I'm going to be giving her some parsley, little seedlings. So I have parsley seedlings all over the place, free parsley. I did not buy parsley this year. I also did not expect this to happen. Like, look at all this parsley that I have. I have two chive plants. You can see I use chives quite a bit. I'm hoping <laughs> I should, I, I need to plant more chives, I think. Um, here I have grape, grape vines. They don't produce grapes, but I do eat these. I use them when I'm fermenting. If I'm out of weights, I use glass weights when I ferment. And if I don't have them, I can just put one of these leaves on top of my ferment and then just put like a Ziploc bag full of water. And that works beautifully. And I also like using these um, leaves and wraps. That way I'm not eating as much bread. I'm eating something that's good for me. And yeah, and it gets rid of an evasive vine that's trying to take over my herb garden. Not as bad as my mint. I mean, look at that. 
And here I have oregano. I have harvested a bunch of this oregano. This is in its second year. It's trying to flower. I keep harvesting it. I'm gonna have, I have so much oregano, like it's crazy. But I use a lot of oregano, so it's perfect. And here I have lemon thyme. It's also in its second year and it's also flowering and I've also harvested it at least once and I need to harvest again. So that's my little herb garden. We're gonna move on. So here I have this little raised bed. It was an abandoned bookshelf that was on the side of the road on my street last year. And we took it, we just turned it upside down. We covered it in like some kind of weedy cloth. And here I have squash growing. And I think that's a little sunflower that made it. I have pickling cucumbers that are flowering. And I have little like trellises that it can climb up. And I also have, I tried planting sunflowers here, but the squirrels got to it. Here I have a sunflower plant. I have more cucumbers. These are just regular like field cucumbers. And there's another sunflower. So cucumbers, when they start springing out these little vine thingies, they can wrap themselves up around the sunflower in theory and climb up and then they work together. Okay, so I've shown you just about everything. We're just going to go to my front garden bed. Um, there's not a whole lot happening there. I really wanted to put raised beds out on my front lawn, lawn this year and it just did not happen. It was just too crazy, very busy. It's very humid and my curls have fallen out. But anyhow, we're gonna go up front right now. It's starting to rain heavier, so I'm glad we're almost done. This is taking a lot longer every time I seem to call my dad. My dad and my <laughs> my um, stepmother, they make the mistake of asking me how my garden is and then I spend like 10 minutes showing them my garden because I'm very proud of it. Okay, here we go. So this is the front of my house. There are all kinds of weeds growing on my lawn because I'm this crazy person in my neighborhood. Everybody has meticulous lawns and I'm like, hey, let's leave the weeds growing and let's see what they are. So this plant here is mullein. Uh, there is a local company that sells mullein tea for $12 a bag. So guess what's getting dried and turned into tea? This I wanted to know what it was because it was growing in my front garden bed and I noticed that there was another one growing out here. I'm really glad that I pulled it from my front garden bed because it is massive and this is sweet white clover. It's actually quite useless, but bees like it. And it's great for restoring nutrients to the soil because it is part of the pea family and peas or legumes are great for adding, I think it's nitrogen to the soil. And here I have sankfoil growing. And I thought this was mullein. My friend was like, no, it's primrose. I think it's mullein though, because it had leaves like this, but then it got mowed down the first time around. Okay, so here I have the Siberian, I think it's a Siberian pea tree kind of thing, or beans. Apparently you can eat them, but I think it's too late, and apparently they don't taste super great. But here, this is my front garden bed. It's, I mostly wanted to see what was growing here. I have poppies that I planted from a wild, from wild seed packets last year, so they came back, which is great. I also have this invasive wine sp vine species. I think it is bindweed. I don't know for sure if it is black bindweed. It is edible, so I haven't completely gotten rid of it. Although I did pull quite a bit out. Here I have my zucchini. I did not have any room anywhere else to plant my zucchini, so it winded up here because it has the most space. I tried tying it up and staking it so that the leaves don't touch the ground and they don't get super wet when I go to water it because last year my zucchini started bearing fruit but it got powdery mildew because it was too wet so this year I'm doing something a little bit different so here I have another zucchini plant and all my zucchinis came from seed by the way because why spend like two three four dollars on a plant when you can buy a packet of seeds for two dollars and have many more plants Okay, so that's another zucchini plant that I planted. I need to water it actually because 
it's covered by an eave, but it seems to be doing pretty well considering. Lots of weeds over here and wild plants. I need to rake this up. Um, so I have a mix of wildflowers and I was grow I was taking this out and it just kind of seemed to crop up over night. This grass took over my front flower beds this year, so I've tried to be very diligent about pulling it up this year because when it really starts growing and taking root, it's really hard to get out. I ended up buying another cherry tomato plant at the store because that's before I realized I had other cherry tomato plants growing in my garden. The leftover cherry tomatoes that kind of went to fertilize my garden. I guess not a really good fertilizer, but kind of just got left in the bed to decomp like to compost. So I bought another tomato plant and I didn't have room anywhere else, so it got planted up here. Here I have a bee balm that I planted because it's, well, great for bees and it makes a really good tea. Never actually had bee balm tea, but here it is. And now we're going to walk up to the other side. I have more mullein over here. Here's my beautiful yellow lawn. Hopefully it'll become lush and green again. Okay, so here I have, I think it's Spiria, Spiria. I have a lot of these bushes. I have lavender. I haven't done anything with my lavender. I really should. I don't know if it's too late because it's flowered, but well, neighbors are probably wondering what I'm doing. That's fine. Who cares? But uh, yeah, this was transplanted from the main garden patch last year and it's very happy. It's an, its second year and even though it was transplanted, it's so much happier than last year. Here I have chocolate mint that I grew. Uh, I, I just planted it recently. I'm very excited for this. Oh, that reminds me. I need to bring some to my mother-in-law because she's curious about chocolate mint. Uh, I do have two types of mint in the herb garden and I forgot to tell you about that. I have peppermint and I have mojito mint. The mojito mint was a gift from a friend because she had a lot of mint. So here I have cosmos that are kind of, that came up from last year. I did not realize that they're perennials, but here they are. And I have more over here that are in bloom and they're lovely. You look at how beautiful they are. I don't have many flowers, but these make me immensely happy. And then I planted bulbs that I saved from last year. Oh, well, that's a weed, but that's supposed to be a gladiolus. And I had planted a bunch and only two. Oh, there's another one that's new but yeah it's coming up so here I have another zucchini plant and it has flowers it's doing things so that's exciting and then I have one more zucchini plant I have another one of those things oh look at how pretty look at how pretty my flowers are <laughs> okay uh focus Sylvia. So I tried say I tried staking this plant too, but this one it keeps you can see the string that I tried tying it up with. It keeps being stubborn. And you can see that this is also on soil that is covered. But yeah, it is doing things. And this is the first one that sprouted up for me, so it should be the first to produce fruit. The last things that I want to show you are my berry shrubs. So this is a raspberry that I planted last year. It's in its second year. I don't know how well it's going to do if the birds are going after it. It's starting to do things. It just doesn't look very healthy. It doesn't look happy. It looks like something's been picking at the berries. So I don't know. I don't think I'm going to get any fruit from here because I think something is eating the berries. They were growing and then actually those are still growing. There's still hope. Oh, look, there we go. That's better. I'm just impatient. Okay, so that's second year raspberry. And even if it doesn't do well this year, look. It's expanding. Okay, so moving on. This is a gooseberry that I planted this year. And there were gooseberries. There were a few, but my little boy ate them slash 
birds got to them or squirrels or something. I don't want to explore too much because it has thorns. You see the thorn? I have pricked myself more than once, so I'm careful around the gooseberry bush. And then the last, last thing I want to show you are my, are my black currants. I really want white currants and red currants too, but this is all I got. It did have currants, and I think my little boy picked it clean before it was ready. I made the mistake of giving him a couple of the ripe fruits. Oh, there's one. I made the mistake of giving him a couple of the ripe fruits the other day, and he wanted more. And of course, there weren't any others that were ripe, but when I was watering up front the other morning, he ran to the currant bush and he just munched away at all the fruit he could find, disregarding whether it was ripe or not, because he's a berry. So thing. that is it for my victory garden tour. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, something wonky is going on here with the sun. It's very wet over here. I don't know what's going on. It's very wet over here. I'm feeling damp. My hair is a mess. I'm gonna go inside and make a cup of tea. Or, you know what? I think I'm gonna go inside and make a glass of lemonade. Oh, I really need a glass of lemonade. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye! This is my lilac shrub. It's in its second year. It already flowered. This is an echinacea that I planted this year. And look, the squirrels got to it. Damn squirrels.